Hello, Les from Thailand and today's video is going to be about this. I got my marriage visa granted or under consideration. Yes, this is my third year with my marriage visa. For those people who followed me, my various applications for marriage visas, one time, six time visits to the immigration, second time, four times to the immigration, three times in one day. And this year, only two, only two visits to the immigration and we've got our stamp for under consideration. So this almost says you're 100% granted because all the information gets checked at the immigration office in Rayong, then it gets sent to Bangkok for verification, and then I'll pick up my stamp in my visa next month. So what I'm going to do is go through all the paperwork that I submitted to go to the visa immigration. Now my recommendation is that you go to the immigration department first with all the paperwork that you think you're going to need except your bank statements. Get your bank statements last so then you, you're prepared. That's the last thing that you have to do and that's probably the easiest thing that you've got to do is get your bank statements. Now they take a week to process and can get delivered to the bank. So this is for renewal of the marriage visa. Going through the marriage visa is, is sort of a different kettle of fish but you need the same information but this is for renewal of the marriage application. So if you're looking on the website to try and find out what information you require, it's very sparse, it's very difficult, it's not very easy to find out. So I've, I've done it by trial and error over the past three years and now this year, as I say, only two visits to the immigration department. Now I'm going to put a list here of this is what I found on various websites and this is Siam Legal who produced this list of requirements to go to the immigration now, I suppose this suggests that Sime Legal will do, do it for you, but it's a lot more costly to get somebody to do your marriage visa than go and do it yourself. So, this lot of information here isn't an extensive list of requirements. That's what I'm saying about going to the immigration department first and they will tell you what they require. Because this list here was not enough for me in my first visit or second visit but now my third visit because we've been there twice we keep all the information and when we went two weeks ago she looked at all the information that we give her last year and like no this is no good no that's no good I want this now so even from last year to this year it changed e.g. the hand drawing location of our house it's been okay for the last two years but this year no she wanted a different hand drawing of our location so really that was the only alteration that we had to do this year so we were quite happy with that but we still took all the paperwork that she discarded for our second visit just in case she was asking for something else I'll put a list up here of all the paperwork that we took as you'll see there's a lot more paperwork required than any list that you see on the internet I'm not saying this is going to guarantee you're going to get a, a visa but if you fill all of this application forms and find out all of this information that's your best arm to do it then. And uh, I'm going to go through the list. And this list that I'm doing, it's in the chronological order that she wanted everything. So if you follow this list, you, you won't go far wrong. Um, a TM7, photographs of every page on your passport, that's got something on it. No need to photocopy blank pages. A copy of your TM6, a copy of your proof of address. A STM2 form. Now again, th th this was news to me until last year when they required this. And the STM2 form is the acknowledgement of terms and conditions and you've got to sign that. And then there's another form. There isn't a number on it, but it's called the acknowledgement of penalties of overstay. And that's another form that you've got to sign. So th them two forms I've never seen listed anywhere for requirements for doing a marriage visa. You can download them if, if you just Google it and put acknowledgement of penalties of, of overstay in Thailand and then it'll go straight to the page. And also if you type in STM2, acknowledgement of terms and conditions about your stay in Thailand, you'll be able to download that one also. A copy of your marriage certificate and the Core R2. Now the Core R2, you need to go to the Ampere to get this verified at least two or three months before you go to the immigration department. Basically what this is, it's that the AMPA confirms that you are still married and that's another form that the immigration require. Copy of your wife's ID 
a copy of your wife's house book, a tenancy agreement. Now we rent this property, so we need a tenancy agreement from the landlord or landlady. You also need the landlord or landlady's ID card. You also need proof of ownership of the house that you're renting from the landlord or landlady. And again, extra, what they required last year compared to the year before, they wanted the chenut. Now the chenut is a very valuable piece of paper. So people don't want to give out copies of that because it can be used for all sorts of things. But this is what our immigration demanded that we provide the chenut for the house that we're renting and that it's owned by the landlord or landlady that we're renting from. Again, it's just extra paperwork that they require that isn't on any list anywhere that I have found. A copy of the landlord's blue book of the house that you're renting. They also required the latest electricity bill. Even our electricity bill gets paid by the landlady and we pay the landlady. They didn't care, they just wanted a copy of the electricity bill to say electricity is getting used at the house that we're living in. Pension statement. Now we've done a video, and I'll put the video link up here with regard to ways around pension statements. Now they, they ask for a pension statement because they want to know that my income comes from pension and not from a rental. But like I said, there's ways and means around that, but that's what they asked for was a pension statement and that's where I provide because I do get my own private pension. Some people don't get a private pension. Somebody draws an income off the rental agreements off the properties that they've got in their own country. Now, we say there's ways and means around that, but some immigration departments don't care where the money comes from, but my immigration department wanted to see a pension statement, so that's what I provided, a pension statement. But again, just have a look at this link up here, and that'll go through ways and means of obtaining a, a pension letter. Four pictures of us around the house, inside the house, outside the house, and most importantly, a picture of us next to the address. Now we've got a big address on our letterbox, so we take a picture of that and we use that. Now they wanted a hand-drawn map of our house location. Um, now I just copied the Google Maps, but I drew it myself by hand. And I put, I thought it was very good. It had local pictures of any houses near us, on the side of us, the road signs. I went into great detail, but it was all copied from Google. Now for the past two years, they were happy with that. But this year, no, they're not happy with that. They wanted a hand-drawn map that wasn't copied from Google. So my wife did the hand-drawn map and it was just, <laughs> if you look at it, you wouldn't be able to find our house. But she was happy with the hand-drawn of where we lived. So if she was happy, then we were happy. And 12 months bank statements. Now your 12 months bank statements, they, they take about a week to process. So don't leave it until the last minute thinking you'll go and get your bank statements very quickly. It takes up to a week to get your bank statements. She sort of told us off this year because we haven't updated our bank book every month because they wanted to see all the transactions every month in my bank book. Now we do, do our payments online and I draw my salary out of the bank once a month. The statements are there to tell you what goes on over the year of having the account without going into the bank book. She said, no, I want to see next year, every month updated in your bank book. Okay, if that's what you need to do, we'll go down once a month and we'll update our bank book. No problems. And on the day of your application, when you've got all your paperwork together, you need to update your bank book. So either do a deposit or withdrawal into your bank account that day and then do an update on your bank book. And this is what they want to see also. So all the extra forms and paperwork that I've talked about, I'm going to put a list up here right on the end. So you just need to freeze frame it. And that is sort of the list of all the paperwork that I required to, to do our marriage certificate this year. And it worked this year and the, she was happy with the information that we provided. So fingers crossed for those people who want to follow my video and paperwork trail with regard to immigration. It, it's not too difficult to do. Just wherever they ask for it, it's not, they're not asking for the impossibility. That It's their rules, their regulations, so just follow their rules and regulations. Put a smile on your face and just jump through the hoops because once you've jumped through the hoops it's 11 months without doing any more paperwork. So just jump through the hoops and then all you have to do is every, every 90 days do your reporting. Simple, it's not too difficult and the cost of the visa to do all of that lot is 1,900 baht so far far cheaper than using an agent to do the same work because you still have to provide the same amount of paperwork as if you did it yourself. So it's not too difficult so I'm happy this year 
that we only had to have two visits to the immigration department as to four and six on the other years. So from Les, living the dream in Thailand, till the next video, bye for now.